Please, May. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. This is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we have a special guest, Eddie Coronado. Welcome, Eddie. Thank you very much. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Oh, I'm doing really well. Thank you. I'm using the power of my creative spoken word to affirm good things. So I'm wonderful. telling you that I'm very well and prosperous. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so uh, just to give the listeners a little bit of an idea of who Eddie is. Eddie Coronado is a lottery winner and a law of attraction expert. He has a book, and the name of that book is Manifest Your Millions. In this book... Eddie shares the secrets of the law of attraction and he connects that to his lottery winnings. Also, Eddie's um, testimony is very unique in that he has actually used the law of attraction to win big lottery prizes and manifested other wonderful things through the universal law. Um, as a result of Eddie's insightful teachings, many people have learned to use the law of attraction to manifest money, to manifest new jobs, lucrative businesses, to buy new houses, attract new relationships, and create the lives of their dreams. Thank you so much for being here with us, Eddie. It's exciting. It's a pleasure. Eddie, um, what is the nature of the universal law? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question because that's one of my favorite questions. And it's actually an area in my teaching where I'm different from other people. I honestly believe that the nature of the, that in order to, to effectively use the universal law, you must understand its characteristics and its nature. If you understand its characteristics and its nature, then you can, then you'll know how to approach it correctly. I believe that the universal law, the law of attraction, is a divine power. I believe that it's God. I believe that we as human beings, God wants to express himself through us and as us. And every day is an evolutionary experience for us in which we become more and more of the God force through our expression of life. So, since I believe that this power is divine, I believe that the only way we can effectively use this power is to align to its nature. I always tell people when I speak and when I write about the law of attraction that the law of attraction will never, never work for you. It only works through you. Have you heard that? Yes, absolutely. This power, since it is divine, since it is God, it must work through you and you must mirror its characteristics in order for it to work. I tell people that in order to align to the nature of the universal law, to this God force, this, this, this power that is actually divine, that is God, you must express in your daily life kindness toward people, um, gratitude, everything that is in total opposition to anger, to jealousy, to bitterness. Because when we as human beings go through life and express bitterness and anger in our lives and gossip and things that bring our energy low, we cannot allow the God force that is very creative, that wants to express itself through us, to work for us. So I tell people, first of all, know that this power is divine, know it's God, and then align to its characteristics. All That's why in the ancient books, that's why even in the Bible, I believe it's somewhere in the New Testament, the writer of one of the epistles tells us, whatever is good, whatever is kind, whatever is godly, think on these Those, yes, things. Yes, absolutely. That's why he is telling us that. He is telling us that so that we can align to the power that is divine and that it w is within us. He, thousands of years ago, understood that in order to use this power, you must think on it and think good thoughts. So basically, that's what this power is. Many people these days get stuck using the law of attraction because they don't understand the characteristics. I hear people wanting to win the lottery. I hear people wanting to prosper and to do good things. And they look at the law of attraction like it's a tool, like a hammer, or like it's a screwdriver that they pick up when they need it. It's not that type of power. You must embody this power, and you must become it in your actions and in your beliefs. And when you align to this power, then you can use it effectively. Going back to uh, religious roots, when I grew up, I was sitting in church, and I remember people telling me that we must let God into our heart. You've heard that before, right? Absolutely. 
Okay, that's what the ancients were talking about. When you let God into your heart, you become God because you are a son of God. Your wife is a daughter of God. We are divine expressions of this power. Men and women, children of God. And in order to use it effectively, we must embody these characteristics. That's when anyone asks me about the nature of the universal law, that is the answer that I give them, and I will never stand uh, away from that answer. I will always adhere to that answer, that the universal law is divinity, and it wants to express itself through you. Wow. <laughs> that is, wow. That's, that's, that is um, brilliant. It, 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 it's Simply profound. Brilliant. Yeah, yes. it's profound. But it's not from me. I, I didn't think about this information. I've heard this information for many years through books that I've read by Stuart Weil, Louis yes. Hay. And I go to a wonderful church. I attend Dr. Michael Beckwith's church in Los Angeles. It's Agape. called Agape. Yeah, Agape. Okay. I'm very proud. I get to hear him every week, and I love it. Awesome. And the message that he preaches and teaches on the pulpit is the exact same thing. This power is God, and it is knocking at the door of our hearts, wow. trying to make us more and more like it every day. Wow. So, okay. What made you... What made you first get, get I guess, like involved in this knowledge? You know, I mean... How did you get started? How did you get yeah, started? Yeah, in other words, who, who influenced me or, or uh, set me on this path? Yeah, basically, who? Well, you know, I've always thought about that, too, and I really think that it's part of my evolution on this planet, part of my learning experience to understand what God is and to become more. When I grew up... Um, my family members were all members of a church, and they lived a very restricted life. They didn't watch television. They didn't go to the movies. They didn't really do anything that you know you would consider uh, a fun. You know, right. They thought they thought that you know going to the movies and listening to music, even if it was Frank Sinatra, that it was sin. So being a part of that all my life, I felt very restricted and I, I felt very uncomfortable and one day I picked up a book about the law of attraction that that told me that I had a power within me that's creative that actually told me and affirmed good things about me and made me feel good about myself instead of making me feel bad that I was a sinner that I was gonna go to hell that type of thing so when I read those words from the first metaphysical book that I read, which was by Ernest Holmes, it he wrote a book called This Thing Called You. In that book, he told me that I have power, that I can create my life according to my thoughts and beliefs. It was totally different from anything I had heard in the past. And when I heard those words, when I read those words, I woke up. And I started to evolve spiritually. I broke away from my family members who, <coughs> excuse me, who believed in lack and limitation, who believed in sin, who believed that we were bad, that we were evil, and I started walking a path of evolution, and I've been walking that path ever since. I feel so much liberated now that I know that I have the power to change my life by changing my thoughts. That is exactly my same story. I was raised in a very strict household, you know, and very religious basically and you know this knowledge really saved my life because I was a miserable person wow wow um, <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean I had a grandmother who would scare me when I was a, a little bad child and she would wear a mask of Satan and I was what? about five or six years old and she would scare the heck out of me that and, is crazy. And, and in my family all my family members ever talk about is the end of the world. Yes. Oh, my goodness. They constantly talk about the end of the world. <laughs> and that, that's another conversation on its own. You and I can have a big... You and I can have a podcast about that. Yes, we can. Because I know a little bit about it. Oh, my but, goodness. And I'll tell you why people were, were talking about the end of the world and what it actually means for us. But like I said, as far as this, this thing goes, is I was brought up. Uh, believing that I had no power at all, that I had to go outside for God, that I had to go outside. Right. And, 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 and in the meantime, guess what? The Bible 
says the kingdom of heaven is within you exactly. in the book of Luke. Yes, and Luke. Christ, the Christ consciousness, the Christ person said to the Pharisees that the kingdom of heaven is within you. Why am I told to look for a God outside when Christ himself said the kingdom of heaven is within you? When I heard these words, my mind opened and I changed and I evolved. And that is one thing that I'd like to also mention to you. When you and I realize our divinity, and when we say yes to the law of attraction, when we say yes to this divine power that will create our lives for us according to our thoughts and our feelings, you and I will never be the same again because the nature of the universal law, this divine power, is growth, is expansion as the universe is expanding right now. It's getting bigger and bigger and it's expanding more and more. As you and I say yes to this power and we realize that our power is within us versus outside, you will never be the same because in reality what you're telling the God force is yes. I am ready to evolve. Yes, I am ready to grow. And from that point on, your soul and your spirit will take on a new meaning and a new power, and you will never, ever be the same, my friend. Never again. You might try to, once you learn about the law of attraction and this creative power within you, you might forget about it because as human beings, sometimes we, we forget about it. You know, we get lazy. We start thinking about other things and we forget about this power. But this power will actually never, ever leave us because it wants us to evolve and it wants us to become more and more. And there's a man, have you ever heard of the name of Stuart Wilde? Stuart Wilde is my favorite author. He is also my favorite author, he, and there, oh would be, there would be no Eddie Coronado if there was no Stuart Wilde. He passed away recently. Yes, he did, actually. Um, you know what? Actually, two days before he passed away, I had wrote him, and he wrote me back, and two days later, he was gone. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, um, he is my favorite teacher, really, really. I mean, he was, yeah, I mean, he was a sage. Really he was a sage, yeah. He was a sage. Uh, I wrote him to, and I told him, uh, Stuart Wilde, I said, I, um, I, I, I was chosen out of millions of tickets to appear on the California Lottery Show. I used your book, Miracles, to get there. And my question was, how can I visualize and imagine myself winning as much as I possibly can so that I could really walk away from there as a huge winner? This was before there were there was you know email and access to him on Facebook. He never got back to me, and I don't even know if he got the letter. But I did email him. Okay. It, without Stuart Wilde, there would be no Eddie Coronado, because he, in his very small book titled Miracles, which is probably only 65 pages long, it's such a profound book about the law of attraction. And for the first time in my life. I understood the characteristics and the nature of this power. And one thing he wrote, and I've, I am the one person on earth who has probably read miracles at least 500 times. Wow. And I've heard the CD at least a thousand times. And he make, made mention of one thing on that CD, and I never understood it until last month. He said on that, in that book, Miracles, from time to time, you may drift back. But once you decide on the side of strength, the power of the universal law will always be with you to varying degrees. I didn't understand what he meant for years, but I understood last month. I realized what he meant. And he is dead now, and he's gone. And I can't write him and tell him, thank you for this information. But this information hit me last month. I realized that when you say yes to the universal law, when you say yes to this divine power whose nature is expansion and evolution, you will never, never, never be the same again. This power will take you on great journeys and it will expand your mind and your consciousness in a way that you cannot even imagine. I forgot about the law of attraction for a while because I went to school for my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And I tried to get things by networking, by asking, by begging, by, by doing everything on the outside to get what I want on the outside. But one day I realized that my failure 
was the fact that I left my first love and that the only way a person like me who has said yes to this evolutionary power to get what I want is to return to the within to turn from the outside to within and to start getting what I want on an inner level this is um this is awesome seriously I am thoroughly enjoying this conversation there's so many questions I want to ask you um, so many questions I am a student of this I love this I, me too I mean these universal laws have changed my life completely I was oh, yeah. a miserable negative person when I heard that we create our reality with our words and our thoughts mm -hmm. like it felt like I it felt like I already knew this information but somehow forgot it exactly it resonated with you yeah it was, it was like you know what I've always known this but how did I forget this you yeah. know and <laughs> yeah I mean but like but since that day I have been manifesting ever since and I haven't stopped or slowed down yet you got that right because you're on the right track absolutely absolutely <laughs> you know Eddie um some people have a hard time manifesting things okay what type of blocks keep us from manifesting well that's heavy too and I learned a lot from Stuart Wilde well when wanting to ma well, okay first of all a lot of people want to manifest money from the universal law that's important all right uh, some men want to manifest a girlfriend a lover we want to have people in our lives who we love some of us want to uh, manifest a job through the power of the universal law the most important part, and this is heavy, brother, this is heavy, and it's not from me. This is just from what I've learned and through Michael Beckwith, through Stuart Wilde, and what I've been fortunate enough to know. This power that you are creating money with, this power that you are creating a job with, a business, a life, this power is God, and you cannot limit God. By telling this power that I must manifest money from a lottery prize that I must manifest what I want by two o'clock Tuesday afternoon that I must get the man or the woman that I want you are improperly using this power right. because since this power is God this power cannot be limited by your little infinite uh, very very small expectation right. this power can manifest a fifty million dollar lottery win or it could manifest a cure for brain cancer that's what this power can do it can do anything and in order to use it properly you must align to its nature there we go again with aligning to its nature and you must allow this power to manifest from whatever whatever avenue of expression it chooses when I started working on manifesting money and prosperity I was a lottery player and I played regularly but I was smart enough to know that I could not limit this power that by stating that I must win lottery prizes I would limit this power so what I did is I imagined myself having lots of money not lottery money but just money right. I visualized it I affirmed it I felt the reality of it and because I visualized every day because I affirmed every day I began to create an expectation within me and that expectation brought me a wonderful lottery prize the first prize that I ever won was fifty thousand dollars on the California lottery wow. I won that prize I went to Sacramento and I appeared on a television show and I did not even buy the ticket I got on that show with oh, not even buying the ticket Crazy. now when I got the letter in the mail telling me that I won I asked my sister if I got mail that day she said some stupid letter from the lottery came I opened that stupid letter from the lottery and they told me that they had a drawing of millions of tickets and there were a few finalists and I and I was chosen to go to the show so because I did not expect the law of attraction to manifest money in a certain way the I won a lottery prize of fifty thousand dollars not in a traditional way by buying a ticket I found a ticket 
And not only that, but I went on a vacation to Sacramento. They paid for my hotel, paid for my lodgings, and I was on television. That's the universal insane. law the universal law will respond to your thoughts and feelings but this power cannot be limited by you because when you with your small ego mind ego based mind and my small ego based mind that only knows certain things that only understands certain things when I expect it to manifest for me in a certain way then I instantly block it your job as a co-creator with the universe is to feel the reality of abundance, to feel the money, to feel the opulence, to affirm it, not only with your words, but through your thoughts and through your feelings and through your actions. And when you do that, when you create the belief, then the money will come. And there is nothing, nothing that can stop that money from coming to you. Wow, Eddie. This is good stuff. Ah. This is good stuff, man. You are... You are laying it down. Good. This is this is awesome stuff. Okay. Wow. Well, people need to know it. People need to know it because people, you know, they they sometimes people get caught up thinking that you know this is the way it works and that's the way it works. But I want to let people know I did not want to waste my time manifesting money through the universal law unless I knew how to uh, uh, manifest money correctly. And since then, I've won lots of smaller lottery prizes and one bigger lottery prize. So I've been very prosperous and abundant. I'm even selling uh, lots of copies of my book. I, uh, my book is available on Kindle and paperback, and it's also available as an audio download. It'll be available very soon. But the thing is, is that I worked on prosperity from an inner level, and I let God take care of the details. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. So, Eddie, can you give us some tips? What are some daily tools that we can use to manifest our <laughs> desires? Okay, I'm glad you asked me that question. I would have to say, I'm going to start from small and I'm going to get to big. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say affirmations are great. When we affirm our prosperity and abundance, it changes our expectation. It changes what we are focusing on because we get more of what we focus on. But the thing about affirmations that I want to let you know is that when you affirm your prosperity and your abundance, it's very important to state affirmations that you can believe in right now. Because if you don't believe what you're saying right now, then you're going to create negative feelings to go along with those affirmations. Mm -hmm. If I, for example, didn't know how to manifest money through the law of attraction, and my affirmation was, I am rich and prosperous and abundant, and I have millions of dollars in my bank account right now. If I don't feel rich and abundant, and if I don't have millions of dollars in my bank account right now, I'll feel negative and I'll feel bad when I state those words. So it's very important that when we state affirmations, to state affirmations that are true to us, a better affirmation would be, I love the thought of having lots of money mm -hmm. and I am now attracting more and more money through the creative power of my thoughts and my feelings when you feel good about your affirmations and feeling is the secret Neville Goddard, Goddard wrote a book titled feeling is a secret yes, I have when, you, that. Yes. when you feel good about what you're stating then you create because the language of the universal law the language of this power is feelings. Mm -hmm. That's the language it speaks. Feelings. Right, right. It communicates to us in terms of feelings. Like, that's why a lot of people talk about how I felt guilty or I felt bad. Your insides, your inner man is, or your inner woman is talking to you. The universal law, the spirit, will speak to you in terms of your feeling. Mm -hmm. Rarely do we walk down the street and do we hear the voice of God talking to us. Mm -hmm. You might hear some horns or you might hear people playing basketball or whatever or someone on the cell phone, but you won't hear the voice of God, but you'll feel the voice of God. Right. Another thing about affirmations that I wanted to share is keep in mind that affirmations are not only words we speak, but we affirm through our actions on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. All right? Exactly. Every if you say that you are always surrounded by positive, uplifting people, 
but you hang out with your negative cousins who are always cussing and putting people down, <laughs> then that's an affirmation to the universal law. And every time you go see them, you are telling the, the, this divine creative power within you that you want more of that. Mm -hmm. So our actions are very powerful and they are affirmations. When you speak affirmations, I honestly believe that your affirmations should be short, like I said, believable, and you should repeat them throughout the day. Now, women enjoy affirmations a lot, from what I've learned, because <laughs> because because uh, women, you know, if I write a card to my girlfriend, she's going to read that card, and the words that I write are very important. Mm -hmm. I have a I had a girlfriend who was constantly singing songs and repeating lyrics to songs. She loves song lyrics. And if, if you say words to a woman, you got to be careful. Isn't that right, ma'am? Hey, that's true, brother. When you speak to your <laughs> wife, you need to be careful about what you say. Yes. One word, one wrong word will throw you off track for months. And it will cost you money, too. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, your, so your words uh, have to be very, very creative all the time. Um, as far as women are concerned, like I said before, women like to affirm. Mm -hmm. A lot of men become discouraged because men sometimes don't like to speak affirmations. But I tell people that men are more wired, better wired to visualize because men get excited about a home run. Men get excited about a car that we see. Mm -hmm. No disrespect intended, but sometimes men get excited about a beautiful woman. All right, we we as men we as men are wired to get excited about what we see. So I tell people, if you as a woman, if you don't like visualizing, but it, you can feel very good and creative when you affirm, then affirm more often. But if you as a woman enjoy visualizing and affirming the same to the same degree, then do it. A lot of my male friends do not like speaking affirmations because words just don't do it for them. I always tell them, visualize more often because it's very powerful when you visualize. And if what m makes you feel good is visualizing, then do that more often because that is very powerful you, for you. And that will bring you what you need. I tell people, first of all, to start with affirmations and then move up to visualizations. Because we as human beings, we don't think in terms of words we think in terms of pictures right. and when we use our mind when we sit on the couch for five ten minutes a day faithfully and we use our mind to imagine ourselves having more money having enough money to go out and buy sushi and hang out with friends and go to lobster dinners or travel or do whatever you want to do when we do that on a day-to-day -day basis we First of all, we organize our mind and our thoughts, and then we become more comfortable emotionally with what we want. Mm -hmm. When you can see it, you can be it. It's very, very important to use the tools of affirmations daily and visualization because those tools are powerful and they can change your life. Another thing that I've been teaching people recently is that every day, you should have an intentional statement that you repeat, all right? Mm -hmm. Your intentional statement might be something like, my intention is to have lots of money so that I can enjoy my life, so that I can go to New York whenever I want and stay at the best hotels, so that I can go out and have lobster dinners once a week. My intention is to have a lot of money so that I can save a certain amount of money every month. When you state your intention daily, you're using the law of attraction because whatever we focus on, we bring more into our life. Absolutely. That's what I tell people. Affirmations, visualization, and get yourself a short intentional statement that you can use daily. I carry around a rock that I bought at a store in San Diego. And it's a little cute polished rock that has the word intention on it. When I go to work in the morning, I stick this rock in my pocket. When I get to work, I take it out of my pocket and put it on my desk. And when I see the word intention on this polished rock, I remind myself to state my intention. Throughout the day, from the beginning of the, of the day to the middle of the afternoon to when I get off work and get home, I'm always faced with my intentional statement. And I repeat it three or four times a day. And you want to know something? 
that helps me create a better reality because we are creators, right? We absolutely. are creators. That is absolutely right. I think that's awesome information. Thank you so much, Eddie. I want to also tell the listeners that um, we do have um, Eddie's audio on, on, on You Are Creators right now. It's, the title is The Ultimate Guide to Wealth and Prosperity, Law of Attraction. So check that out. And Eddie mentioned before, um, he does have his full audio book coming out within a week. So make sure you all check that out. Right now, you can also purchase Eddie's book on Amazon. So we're going to put all that information in the description box just for you all to know. That's wonderful. Eddie, you are a fantastic teacher. You are. You know, I just I do want to just highlight something. We've never, I don't think that we've had anyone before just distinguish the way that male and females attract and I think it's so very important. I think you made a very good point when you said men are usually, they're more visual. And that's absolutely right. And I know even for Justin and I, that's absolutely right. So I think that is some excellent, excellent information. I think, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I've never really heard anyone and teach that. So I think that's great. Well, it's the spirit within me talking. It, it's not me. It's the spirit. You know, whenever we're, whenever we're inspired, the, 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 um, the root word of inspired is to be in spirit. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the spirit. And no one owns a spirit. And it just speaks to us if you listen to it. But it's so true because I know women who don't like visualizing. I tell them, well, if words and lyrics and words and things that you say make you feel good and creative, then use those. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with men because I fought with visualization for a long time. I'm sorry. I fought with affirmations for a long time because for some reason I am a law of attraction teacher and I love the law of attraction but I do not enjoy speaking affirmations. Really? I love visualizing and I visualize every day for 20 minutes a day but every day I speak my intentional statement every day. In addition to that the words that come out of my mouth regularly are either neutral or positive. I never say anything negative. That becomes my affirmation. That is perfect. You know, Eddie, what is more powerful, your words or your thoughts? Well, I think that uh, our, our, our thoughts are more powerful. Our words are tools that we use to Okay, look, this is a powerful question, and I'm glad you asked me that. The answer is our thoughts are more powerful. Our feelings are the most powerful. But the words that we use are tools that we bring up memories from, that we bring up feelings from. Like I said before, with women, you, you use a wrong word on a female or some males, and you got a fight on your hands. Yeah. That's true. But if you use the right words with the female, you got a great, you know, a great life with her, that type of thing. Words are very powerful because they call up memories, they call up situations, things that we can anchor on and that will allow us to uh, uh, pull and bring uh, uh, positive and creative uh, memories into our lives. Uh, why would you ask that question? Because I'm really curious. I want to delve into this a little bit more. Why? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I was always raised to believe that words, they create, you know, um, and, you know, actually, uh, there's a book called Conversations with God by mm -hmm. Neil Donald Walsh. Oh, yes. And God told him that, um, that words are more dense than thoughts. Sometimes I think that words are more powerful, but I don't know. Well, what I've learned from words is that words focus our power. When I state my intentional statement daily, my power is focused because I am stating whatever my intentional statement is. If your intentional statement is, it is my intention to have lots of money so that I can save a certain amount of money every month. I, during that time, when I repeat my intentional statement, I'm focusing on what I want. I'm calling not only feelings about what I want, but images and memories about what I want. So when I speak those words, they allow me to focus. The real creative power in the universe, in our bodies, and who, in who we are, our real creative power is the power of our feelings. Right. Our feelings are created through our words that we speak and through our visualizations. When you sit down and you visualize a Cadillac CTS that you want, or whatever type of car you want, vacation, 
you are you are calling to mind images of this car that make you feel good that you like you might like a car that i don't like i might think that the car you like is ugly but when you use your visualization and your images in your mind to call to mind feelings about that car and images of that car what you're doing is you're creating feelings within you and those feelings are very creative they will bring your prosperity to you I know this because I'm talking from experience when I started visualizing for prosperity not for lottery wins not for lottery wins when I started visualizing for money and for abundance I knew that as a result of the fact that I was affirming at the time and I was spending a lot of time visualizing at the time, I knew that these feelings that, that I was creating through my visualization exercises, I knew that those feelings were creating power within me and I started to feel more and more expectant every day. And I would walk down the street and I would think to myself, who's going to find me? Who's going to... Um, uh, who's going to discover me? Who's going to give me money? And uh, I was feeling so creative and so expectant because of the spiritual work I was doing that every experience became a possibility for me to wow. prosper. And finally, I, st I wa started winning lottery prizes through the Law of Attraction. And it's been a wonderful experience. But I'll tell you one thing. When you visualize every day, it's like building your spiritual muscles. When you affirm every day, when you state your intentional statement, and when you live your life in alignment to this power, to this divine power within you, when you abstain from gossip, when you abstain from bitterness, when you abstain from negativity and judgment, even if you hate Justin Bieber, when you <laughs> abstain from all this stuff, then you are living in alignment to the divine power within you. And if you focus on what you want through the power of your spoken word and through your visualization exercises and what you see in your mind, you will get what you want. Because I tell people that this power, that, we're, that the law of attraction is an infinite spiritual technology that will produce the same results over and over as long as it's exposed to the same conditions. It does not care if you are good looking, not that good looking. It doesn't care if you're smart or if you only score 50 on the IQ test. It does not care if you're thin or you're fat or if you were born in Los Angeles, California or some jungle in Ni or, 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 some, or some village in Nigeria or Africa. It does not care. It will produce the same results for you as it will for me. The determining factor is your belief in this power wow eddie eddie thank you so much for being on you are creators really this will not be the last time oh please no i want to come back again yes um next time let's talk more about metaphysics because i you want it yes I like that. You know what I think next time i think you and i need to get into a discussion of why the 21st century is the greatest century for spiritual evolution because there are things that are happening in the sky cosmically there are things that are happening within us that are changing us I'll just leave you with this briefly have you ever wondered why 120 years ago there was no light bulbs there were no cell phones uh, there were no automobiles and all of a sudden within the last 120 years we've evolved to the point where we can send a man to the moon 10,000 years of human history produced nothing and all of a sudden within the last hundred years we go to the moon Wow! something is happening to us cosmically and you and I are at the the very first step of a great evolutionary period that is known as the age of Aquarius and it's, pow that. it's powerful you know um, these are very very exciting times really they, they are, are. Um, this is okay this is kind of like out of the blue a little bit but what are okay do you believe that we are the only uh, beings in the universe? 
I'm not really sure. I think about that sometimes, and the only thing I could call to mind is the other day I was in my car taking a break, and I thought about the sun, how it's 93 million miles away. It's the perfect distance for life on Earth. I thought about the moon. Without the sun and the moon, we will not be here. I thought about the entire universe, the Milky Way galaxy, and the millions and billions of galaxies out there. And I really don't think that we're alone. Yeah, I don't think so either. I would like to think that everyone else out there is more evolved than we are, because I don't want another Independence Day. <laughs> right. Huh? Exactly. I would like to think that these beings are that 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 we are like cavemen compared to these beings. Right. All I know is one thing: we are evolving, and we are like a train through the night evolving. We are evolving at such a high pace that we could go in through an entire podcast next time, and I can tell you why it's happening and what I think. This is big, you know. Um... I have so many questions. I am a student, but I I'm a student too. Yeah, I'm I want to know everything and I can't help it. That's I mean, that's how I am. I question everything and I read everything and I want to know why. Um there's so many questions that I want to ask, but unfortunately we got to wrap this up. Okay. But next time Eddie, let's really converse. Let's go. Just me and you, no wife this time, just me and you, and we're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> and let's, you know, let's ask the big questions. Right? And let's get, people, let's get people excited about why they're so lucky to be here. Right. Why people were afraid of 2012 and what 2012 really means, because it means something cosmically. It means something that has to do with our position on Earth and within our solar system in relation to the position that we have with, with, within the uh, revolution that we experience around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. I have a feeling that this is big. And it's, it's big. And it's bigger than what we really know. It's, I don't know, you know what? I can't explain it, but like it's something that's inside of me that's telling me that this is a wonderful, wonderful time. This is a beautiful time. Well, I will tell you one thing. On December 22nd, 2012, not December 21st, but on December 22nd, that was the day when the Maya long count calendar, the last, uh, the, the, the last long count calendar ended, and it started again. That was the day when the ancients believed that the age of Aquarius started. And the age of Aquarius and we'll get into all the details because I have them here in a book and I have them written down. But the age of Aquarius is a time, it's an age that is characterized by great, immense spiritual evolution on Earth. We are changing very fast. Yes. I'm excited, Eddie. Eddie, thank you so much for being with you, our creators. Um, next time, I promise you, let's talk for about an hour. Let's do it, okay. man. All right. All right. Um, this is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we support your dreams.